G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. What I'd like to do on this project is a very simple two-part project on making a hand tool with hand tools. And it's a mallet. Now when it comes to woodworking mallets, there are all sorts of mallets on the market nowadays. And of course, there is always the mallet that Bob got to. And that's what I thought I'd do, would be make a mallet to replace the one Bob thought was a toy. If you want to get your hand tool skills up, this definitely is a project you can cut your teeth on. You'll notice most mallets have an angle on the face. Now the reason for that is, when you're striking it, the mallet at the point of impact is parallel to the ground. If I had a 90 degree piece on the end of my mallet, when I strike it, you see it's on an angle. Whereas with an ordinary mallet, it's parallel. As a rule of thumb, I think two degrees suffices in all the mallets that I've got anyway. Here's a really easy way of getting the guide for two degrees to make a mallet. Just grab a piece of MDF like I've got here, nothing flash. The important thing is that these pieces here are at 90 degrees to this face coming down here. When you've got that glued on and it's nice and set, put your ruler up against the pine there, extend that line across, measure down 90 millimetres, bring that line in and measure in five millimeters. Now if you join the edge of this line here to that five millimeter mark on the inside, that will be so close to two degrees, it's not funny. Pop that in the vise and just plane down to that line and hang it up on the wall. I've got a piece of sapelli here which was what I just grabbed out of my wood shelf. Uh, traditionally, it's been European beech, but what you actually want is a timber that's strong, but not stronger than the chisels that you're using. And if you look at the mallet head itself, it's concaved where it's been used, and it's been used a lot. But if you look at these chisels, there isn't a mark on the top. So just bear that in mind when you're sourcing the timber for your mallet head. And this is how I mark it out. I've got the jig, a square, a ruler, and a pencil. The head of the mallet that I want to make, I want to finish at about 120 mil, or four and three quarter inches. So because I'm not all that confident about my sawing skills, I will give myself 125 mil, or five inches, and then if needs be, I can pair it back if I'm not cutting it straight. Measure in from the end, five inches. Take the jig you've just made, place it on that mark, then draw a line. Now, that is gonna be the top of the mallet. Continue that around, and if everything is working well, those two marks should line up. What I will do now is just line that up with the ruler. And with a sharp knife, just score a couple of registration marks down there. Grab a bench hook, put that in there. I'll just grab a chisel, light it up that line. Now I've got a nice fence, if you like, to run the saw blade along. Then get your crosscut saw. What you've got to be looking for is to line the blade to be cutting on this line as well as this line down here. We don't really want to variate off the line we're cutting. 
And if you've got a nice sharp saw, it shouldn't take too long. Now, of course, if you've got a table saw, if you've got a band saw, or if you've got a drop saw, all three actually are about four metres away, you could use those. Now, another important thing to look for when you're getting the timber is to have a quarter saw. And if you can see those lines going across there, and normally, if I was doing furniture, I would lay it so the growth rings were up and down. But with a mallet, I want them this way because then when I wedge in the handle, it's not going to split. Normally it's accepted anything over 60 degrees, they class as quarter sawn. So if it's sort of going like that, but you do want as much horizontal grain as you can possibly get. Now I'm going to square this up and I'm using the top as my reference point. If you've got a linisher or a belt sander, you could use that. I personally don't like doing that because you've only got to roll at a fraction and you're going to knock it out of square. Okay, now that is nice and square on all these faces. Now we've got to make sure that this is square to the sides. Now to do that, I'm going to use a block plane. Traditionally, block planes were made for butcher's blocks, hence block plane, and it's for planing end grain. So make sure it's nice and sharp, and I'm only going to have a very small gap between the front of the plane and the blade. And you can see how nicely that is dealing with the end grain. To prevent tear out, if I push the plane and pick any fibres up here, I can tear them out. So if I just put a little chamfer across that edge there, that'll prevent fibres from tearing out. Just finishing it off. And there you have it. Nice and square. And for the other end, it's the same thing. And that's what we're looking for. Plain both ends, square. Just to double check and put your mallet jig on top of it and that angle's the right angle. What I would do now, <clears throat> there's several reasons for it. One, it stops the end grain from checking or splitting with uh, changes in temperature. And it also gives a little bit of a barrier for when you're using the mallet. But what I'll do is get some ordinary PVA and then cover the faces. Do that both ends. Now you have to work out what size handle you want. Now, for example, that is a handle that I made for one of my grandsons when he was eight years old. That is the handle that I made for a mallet for me. And my hands are a lot bigger, so I feel more comfortable with the bigger handle. His obviously was smaller. The average ones you buy, depending if you've got big hands or small hands, they might do you. You might want a design in your handle. There's all sorts of things to consider. So what I suggest is just grab a little bit of uh, 2B1 or something or other and play around with just grabbing feels what comfortable. If you do a taper in it like that, you hold it down there, no, that's a bit thin. Well, that's not too bad. No, that's too big. Okay, that for me is the thickness I want my hand to be. Once you're happy with that, grab a piece of MDF, place your handle on it and just mark the width that you like and this is the widest part of your handle so what you actually want is the hole at the bottom of the mallet to be a little bit wider than the widest part of the handle if I take this widest point here, it's about 38 mil. I'll make sure that the exit hole for the handle is about 40 mil. That way I can get enough meat through the handle to be able to do a bit of shaping on the handle itself. So I will now mark out a 40 mil slot here. And I'm going to be using 19 mil timber or three quarter inch timber. 
which is what I want for a big hand. If you're doing it for a child, you might want um, 5 8 timber. If it's for a lady, again, 5 8 timber because they've got smaller hands. Find the centre of the base. You can do that using a marking gauge or a ruler. It doesn't matter if it's a marking gauge. What you do is guesstimate the middle. I won't even measure this, I'll just have a look. Yep, that's pretty close there. And if I do a mark from this side and a mark from this side, you'll see they're pretty close together. And then if I just bisect that gap, that's going to be the centre. Or, old fashioned way, you can do the diagonals. Go that way. And go that way. And that will give you the centre. Now mark the centre line across. And I'm going to go 19 mil wide. So mark either side of that. Here's another couple of ways. You can either go nine and a half mil on either side or work out how wide that is, which is 75. Divide that in half, which is 37 and a half. And you actually are coming nine and a half mil either side of centre to give you a 19 mil hole. Take nine and a half off of that. That leaves you with 28 mil. If you set your marking gauge up to 28 mil, and if you mark down this side and down this side, that should leave you in the middle with a gap of 19 mil. Now work out the width that you're going to have that hole. And I said I'm going to have a 40 mil hole. So I go 20 mil either side of that halfway line I've just drawn. That there is going to be the exit hole for the handle to come out. I'm not brilliant with a mortise chisel, so I'll be straight up front with you on that. What I'm going to do is actually cut around and do a little bit of um, a rebate, if you like, or a dug out, a very shallow mortise, and then I'll go over to the drill press and I'm going to remove the bulk of this material using a drill bit or a forstner bit. But first of all, I'll mark this out and I'll show you how I do it. I'm just coming in before the line. It'll tap, and on this one, and I'll actually come on the line itself, and down the edges, and there we have it. I've got a very slight recess that I can now bore through. But if you haven't got a bit that can bore all the way through in one go, what we might do is mark out on the top side where the entry for the handle goes. Now in order to do that, marking gauge should be set at the same width we did at the bottom. So mark that along the top and then Reset your marking gauge to whatever the distance is from the bottom edge to the beginning of your exit hole. Use that same setting, only using the top edge and mark across. Don't worry about marking the top because we're going to take that off at some later stage. Now what you've actually done is you've transferred these lines up here, but because it's wider at the top, if you join these lines up, you'll find that this line and that line are on exactly the same tangent as what the end block is. So now you've got this mark. Just mark that out with a chisel. Come away from the line and actually go back onto the line. 
And the reason I chop away from the line to start with is, with this beveled edge, it's like a wedge, and if I put that on the line and hit down, in effect, the chisel is gonna move backwards and we're gonna move that line backwards. By chopping away from the line to start with and then coming back, we've got that relief there. So this piece of timber will now fall into that void and will still be accurate on the lines that we've marked. So there we've got the recess on the exit and a recess on the entrance. Important thing, what we should do is mark these lines and continue them up. Now the reason for that is we want the handle to go in and as you can tell it's on a taper. So we can clean the waste out all the way through at that width and then we're going to have to clean the taper or put the taper in using a chisel from this side down to this side. So just to clean the waste out just go straight up on these two sides here. And there, I've gone all the way through. But we still are only as wide at the top as we are at the bottom. Now it's a question of chiseling this out so it's square. I don't want to put a taper on it yet. Put a bit of masking tape on your chisel. And then you know when you're down to that depth, you're still safe. Keep your chisels sharp. We'll just clean up the edges where we put those tapers. There we have it. Exit, entry, and it's a nice gentle taper from the bottom to the top. You can use a rasp, one of these cabinet makers rasps. I've got pointed ones, whichever works. And then just clean the edges up. In fact, watch it when you're filing. I've got a bit carried away there and I've actually chopped a bit out on the bottom, which only is aesthetics. I wish I hadn't have done it, but just keep an eye on that. But I think I know how I can fix that. And we'll do that next week when we make the handle. So we'll make the handle, we'll shape the handle, we'll fit the handle, and I'll show you how to personalise a mallet to your particular personality or if it's a gift for someone. So until we meet again, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe and enjoy your woodwork. And please like us on Facebook and join up the e-workshop, Woodworking Masterclass e-workshop. Bye for now. In order to do that, I've got to, I've got to put my mallet back together. There we go.